Hello internet, internet. Big Dave here, and I am cheap. Sure. Hello internet, it's Big Dave here, and I would like to introduce you to Rive. R-I-V-E, Rive. This is a forthcoming action platformer from Two Tribes Studios. It is currently still a work in progress. This is an early preview build. I believe the game's due out in early 2015. So here we are, playing this game as a little insect tank guy. Uh, the, the art style right away is gonna smack you in the face as just being absolutely wonderful. I mean, two tribes have a history of putting together some really nice looking games, and this one's just no exception. We'll talk a little bit more about two tribes as we go through the game here. They are uh, practically insisting that I play this game with a controller by putting a giant billboard with an Xbox 360 controller diagram here at the very beginning of the game. I will tell you, I am playing with an Xbox 360 controller. It does work wonderfully. However, I prefer the mouse and keyboard controls despite them not yet being fully optimized. I just think the game plays a whole lot better with a mouse and keyboard, even in this early phase, but I will go ahead and play it with a controller just to prove that it can be done. So yeah, here we are. We are this uh, spider tank thing with a cool laser sight. Uh, it's one of those games, you know, you jump, you shoot. It's that kind of thing. Uh, but it has an extra wrinkle that we will very quickly be introduced to here in what is essentially a tutorial level. Uh, so I don't like things that shoot at me, so I shoot at them. And we move forward. And this is going to be our first opportunity to be introduced to the third major mechanic in the tripod that is uh, Rive's gameplay basics. Here we go. Oh, this door is locked. Darn. Only if a helpful Russian with a large beard would suggest to me some way that I might get through it. Oh, hello. So the airlock's closed and uh, we need to find a control box. Maybe we can override it with our uh, hack beam. Yeah, how do we do that again? Oh yeah, that's right, left shoulder button, because apparently he's piloting this tank with an Xbox 360 controller. Uh, but yeah, this is the other mechanic of the game here. You hack. You hack other robots, you hack terminals, and that gives you access to different parts of the level. And it actually will uh, show, uh, you'll see this later, I'll show you, it actually gives you some interesting additional powers and abilities as you hack your enemies. So it's really, really interesting, and you'll, you'll see that very, very soon. So we've got a shielded enemy here. We're going to be careful when we come through this door, and we're going to blast him. And guess what? He dropped a shield for us, so let's pick it up. And now we have a shield. You can see how the shield is directional. I really like that. I mean, this game, just, just look at it. Just feast your eyes about it. I mean, the game is beautiful. I love that uh, force perspective, like the parallax scrolling in the background with, with the blur on it, with the uh, depth of field blur. Just everything pops in this game, which isn't really a surprise because Two Tribes, they've made beautiful games in the past. Uh, Toki Tori and uh, Rush are two of their, their big games that they've made in the past. Just wonderful looking games. Toki Tori, a, a wonderful puzzle game. Rush as well. And they've also had hands in other games like Edge and uh, Swords and Soldiers. Uh, not 100% sure if those were developed completely by Two Tribes or just published or whatnot. Uh, some of the uh, relationships become a little muddy as you go forward. So here's our first opportunity to hack an enemy. So again, our helpful pilot will let us know uh, that, hey, we can hack that uh, health bot and maybe he'll help us out. You notice we're about 50% health. If you look down in the lower right hand corner of the screen, oh darn, I sure could use some help with that. Maybe this robot will help me when I hack him. Um, by the way, I, I love uh, being a computer guy and actually work in networking. Uh, I love the binary that is just pouring off that guy. And when you hack him, the, a bunch of binary pops out of him, uh, the ones and zeros, uh, the language of computers, if you will. I love it. It's just a, a nerdy little nod uh, to people like me who are uh, total geeks. But yeah, now we've got a little guy who's going to sort of follow us around and heal us when we need to. That's wonderful. And we just might need it because here is our first barrage of enemies. Uh, one thing I have to say right off the bat is that this game plays wonderfully. The controls are just great. The shooting feels so good. And that actually is my number one um, reason to be playing with the Xbox 360 controller because the force feedback, the vibration of the controller moving just makes the shooting so visceral. And it really, really just feels great. This is definitely some of the best shooting I've seen in a platformer in a long time in terms of feel. I'm not necessarily saying that uh, the shooting is uh, wonderful. I mean, you move your stick around uh, your right hand analog stick and uh, you spray bullets everywhere, but it just feels so good to shoot things. Just the, the, the visceral just feeling of it is amazing. 
And that's something that's often hard to do. So I really like these enemies. I'm going to let one of these guys hit me just so you can see the really cool screen effect that happens. Uh, but these are just sort of charge enemies. They're going to come at you. All right. Boom. I love that. I love that screen effect. That just slash of pink right across the screen. And this is a major tutorial level. I mean, this is a short demo, about 15 minutes uh, by the time I do all this talking. So they're going to introduce us to concepts like secondary weapons. So for instance, we can grab this EMP and we can use that to blast the shield off of these enemies, which we would otherwise not be able to shoot because they have shields that we actually can't pierce. And since their shields are down, I could pass through peacefully, but I am a war machine. I am a spider of death. So of course I'm going to deal my hot brand of justice to those guys and go on about my life. Yeah, there we go. More, more dead pink discs. Sorry, you guys picked the wrong side. Always bet on a robot spider. All right, a little bit of a uh, trap room here that we have to overcome. Again, just look at this game. Just this room in particular just has such a nice look to it. I just really, I'm looking around so much that I'm actually, uh, actually getting hit. This one uh, part in particular, I have to say, is one of those parts that made the, uh, the keyboard and mouse controls stand out for me. Because uh, doing all these quick changes from left to right, it gets a little bit tedious for me on the analog stick. Uh, but doing that with the mouse and keyboard, just ba-bam. I mean, I'll actually grab the mouse here and it will pick up immediately. Uh, but, you know, just boom, 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 boom. I mean, that's that to me is just a superior method of control. Uh, but that's just me, a PC elitist. Uh, saying that. Uh, but luckily someone left a, a hamburger here. So uh, somehow a, a hamburger uh, brings health back to our uh, amazing spider robot. But uh, whatever, you know, whatever works. Descending now into the into the depths, into the, the forge, I, I guess. Or, you know, the prized uh, trophy room of a lava collector. Not really 100% sure on that here, but uh, introducing us to a nice little anti-gravity mechanic that is definitely going to come up later in the game. Another Big Mac, just in case we fell into the uh, into the lava there, like we just did. Uh, that is a Big Mac, right? Oh, I see Sesame Seed, so it's not a Big Mick. That's right. Excellent. All right, moving along. Another shielded enemy. Just reinforcing concepts here again. This is a bit of a tutorial level. I definitely need that shield. Thank you. All right shield is back. Feeling good about it. Uh, you see this shield is 90%. The shield I have right now is 100%, so I can't really pick this up because my shield is fully charged. Is that 50%? 50%. You know, futuristic fonts, they kind of run together. Uh-oh. All right, lava. So uh, let's us run away, shall we? I don't want to be uh, melted down by lava. And we have ourselves another heal bot, so let's go ahead and hack him. He's going to heal us up. He's going to heal us up. He's going to heal us up. Apparently he's not. All right. Uh, well, thank you, health bot. Yeah, well, screw you too. All right. Let's get ourselves some uh, ooh, EMP. Let's get ourselves some missiles. I was so anxious to fire my missiles that uh, I fired my EMP instead. I actually did hit a few guys, so that worked out nicely. Oh, now you're now you're healing us. Now that we take some damage, I, I see your game. All right, all right. Come on, there you go. You kind of have to get them to see you and or just to knock on their shoulder by shooting them in the face. The animation, wonderful. The smoke rising up. I mean, considering that this is a, a somewhat early version of this game, just it's so beautiful and just it, everything is so well put together. And you would expect that from from two tribes. Um, you know, I've, I've said that, you know, this, is, this game's a bit of a departure uh, for two tribes. You know, they are known for interesting indie puzzle games. Ha ha. Yeah, not smart enough to open a door, are you? Take that. Uh, they're known for, you know, interesting uh, 2D, or excuse me, uh, interesting indie puzzle games. And uh, this is definitely not one of those. This represents sort of a new direction for the studios. More of these shielded enemies that we can't actually uh, penetrate. So we'll have to go back to our cool uh, anti-grav jumping effect. Yeah, just, that's missiles, missiles. Thank you, Healbot. Thank you. Doing your job nicely. Uh, but yeah, all their other games have been beautiful, but have really basically been puzzle games. So this uh, this is a bit of a departure, and actually the studio itself has undergone some uh, massive changes as they uh, reorganized earlier this year, earlier in 2014. 
and uh, really reduced their staff and kind of launched a 2.0 sort of version of the studio. And uh, I'm sure that was a really uh, difficult time for them, but this is sort of a triumphant return for them. And I'm really happy to see it because Two Tribes have really just been a, a great high quality indie developer over the last, you know, five or 10 years or so. And, and I'm, I would hate uh, to see a developer like that just fall to the wayside. You know, I, I think it's one of those things where they, they sort of got bigger than they could sustain. Uh, you know, they got some bloat and they ended up uh, having to trim back. You know, there's there's only so much work out there. And unless you want to just become a fully for hire studio that isn't really invested in doing your own work, then um, you have to eventually stop and, and say, hey, we, we can't do this anymore. We're not, we're not making games that are going to bring us, you know, millions of dollars in profit. We're making modest games for a specific audience. And, you know, we have to dial it back here. And and, and, and the sad part about that is people people lose their jobs. And that's that's tragic. But uh, such is life, I guess. I want to draw attention to this amazing lighting effect. You can see how the light, I have a, a specific beam to the flashlight. But then the flashlight also gives off additional sort of ambient light, I guess, that's not focused in the beam. It's, it's almost hard to describe, but you can kind of see how I'm, I have that specific flashlight beam there in the middle. But the fact that I'm pointing the flashlight in this direction acts as a light source and actually creates more light. So when I move the flashlight away, it's pitch black dark over there. Then I move it back. It's just, it's a beautiful effect. I mean, just absolutely top notch. And it, it's showing you that these guys are, are for real. I mean, their credentials on two tribes are known. You know, I don't have to rep these guys. Uh, they are uh, badass indie devs. And, uh, I'm glad to see this game from them. Really, really glad. So this is going to be our boss fight. This is basically going to be the end of the demo here. We get to fight a giant version of these annoying little uh, charge enemies, or these annoying little uh, sphere enemies that have been coming at us here for the last uh, 10 minutes or so. And uh, he is shielded except for, oh, wait, I notice a weakness. And I'm kind of glad that they sort of resisted the urge, at least in this early demo, to say, uh, you know, to put up a little cutscene or a little uh, message from your pilot saying, oh, hey, he's uh, completely shielded, but I notice uh, looks like his shields are weak up there at the top. And that accent just kind of mutated across the course of that, uh, <laughs> that soliloquy there. So uh, thanks for hanging in there with that. And this is one of those things that is just absolutely uh, so much easier with the mouse and keyboard to the point that I'm tempted to switch. It takes me about two passes to do this with a mouse and keyboard, uh, but with the controller, it, it takes me about four or five to actually down this boss. Um, so, you know, it's not a big deal. But uh, again, I am, I'm just letting my uh, PC Master Race leanings uh, show a little bit, I guess. So one more pass and we will have this guy dealt with and uh, we will be able to... Uh, Give our final thoughts here on Rive, on this uh, small uh, press preview of Rive, and, 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 and I've been just so amazingly impressed as we explode the Magnum, whatever the hell he was called, and finish off his buds. And we get ourselves a new hack, which is uh, going to show us a new, um, a cool new mechanic that's actually going to give us a, a movable anti-grav field. So you're going to see that here as soon as they send this sort of damaged enemy down, and we grab him and we hack him. And now we can sort of control him. He'll sort of go where we want to go. And uh, we have our own mobile anti-grav field. Really, really nice. Just the, the effect on this, the way it controls is just wonderful. I guess he can only last for so long. Uh, he eventually commits suicide when he realizes that uh, he's going to be stuck for the rest of his short life working for the enemy. And, you know, no story elements here. I don't know why my guy is... Uh, going after these guys or who's who and what is going on exactly it's some sort of weird dystopian future where there are spider tanks and robot armies and that's pretty much all we know and that is the end of this demo uh, i am i'm so excited for this game i have to tell you this it, it plays wonderfully it looks beautiful and it's coming to us from a developer who we know has a pedigree for making wonderful and complete titles and I'm so excited based on that. Just this small 15 minute demo has really sold this game to me. I hope that you guys will keep Rive on your radar as we go forward. And here we have it, the end of the demo. Thanks for playing Rive and thank you for hanging in there as we took a look at this work in progress title. All right guys, I have been Big Dave and until next time, take it easy.